Ladies and gentlemen, Silent Mike here at Untamed Strength with Dr. J. <whistles> Chiropractor? Yes. I guess um, you're in the powerlifting world. Cool. Train with the one and only. Dan yes. Green? Yes. So you're in I the don't, because he's not going to listen to this, so it's okay. Yeah, but whatever. if he does, it'll go straight to his hair. You're in that area. You're yeah, in the yeah. Bossa Barbell world. Yes. Uh, you were recently up in Canada, although you're from there, with Mr. It's Omar Isov. Sadly, yes. Yep, I apologize. <laughs> um, I guess basics. What's um, a chiropractor do mm. and maybe believe? Mm. And then what's a physical therapist do and believe? Because I feel like a lot of times, and even myself, people come to me with injury issues. Mike, my, my this hurts. I said, well, you should probably just go to a doctor and I say a chiro physical. And I just yeah. kind of throw that out there because they're somewhere in the region. Uh, maybe just generally state what they believe and then maybe what you believe. Okay. I mean, it's like anything that's good and bad. Right. I think on the spectrum for athletics, honestly, I think maybe blend more the physical therapy side and that's kind of how i practice over like it's like a venn diagram there's overlapping scopes of practice yeah. so by and large a chiropractor and a physical therapist are legally allowed to do the same thing okay you know what they choose to do depending on their influence or their motivation whether it's money whether it's their philosophy what yeah. their philosophy is going to be it's going to dictate kind of how they operate on a day-to-day -day, right like spending the time going through like physical therapy exercises takes that just time and if time is money and you want to make more of it then you're going to have to see a lot more people so like the average chiropractor by and large is more like rack crack how are the kids how's the wife yeah send you on your way but that being said there are a lot of chiropractors that work in the athletics spectrum realm so yeah. Um, it, I mean, it all depends. And just the same thing on the other side of that. It's like physical therapists maybe lend themselves further right of the spectrum towards like conventional medicine. Like your MDs will work one-on-one -on -one with the physical therapist, but they get dogmatic in how they kind of implement their stimulus, right? So in the powerlifting world, it's really kind of, it's hard because either end of either, either, end of either spectrum is going to be ineffective, right? right? Like if someone, right. oh, my back hurts, crack, 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 see you later, yeah. not gonna do anything. Oh, my back hurts. Well, here, we're gonna do these geriatric banded exercises. Yeah. Probably not gonna work either. So, um, yeah, physical therapy more like, usually rehabilitation, movement-based, chiropractic. I guess active versus passive might be the easiest way to yeah. like differentiate. Let's even just go like stereotypical if you want. Not, you know, because oh. I, we don't wanna yeah. group everybody, sure. but, but chiros uh, often deal with spine and they think everything roots back to the spine, which obviously physically it does, but when we're talking movement, tissue, whatever, they think they think bone, spine, structure, is, yeah. physical therapist thinks soft tissue, movement pattern. Sure. Kind of? Kind of, yeah. And, and, and then, the, like you said, the good ones are down the middle. And yeah, you're seeing an overlap where physical therapists will adjust and chiropractors will do soft tissue and then there's a happy medium. But I think at either end of the spectrum, there's a population that will benefit from polars, but I think in, this, in the powerlifting world, in the yeah. weightlifting world, strength finding someone that that can assess what you need and then kind of implement accordingly is probably the way to go. Yeah, and I, uh, that's why you know I've had a lot of people reach out and do videos or lend me advice on backs and things like that. You guys know my back's a little tweaked up. Um, I've talked a lot also, we can go into rant later about being injured and being hurt. Yeah. Uh, my back hurts, I'm not yeah. injured, I don't need surgery, I don't need an MRI. Um, but I decided to work, uh, hang out with you today. Uh, one, because uh, my buddy Omar, who I trust, put good words in. Sterling recommendation. Two, um, you do what I do. You work with people of my nature. Mm. I've been powerlifting, you know, eight years, playing basketball 15 years before that. Wear and tear is a little different than, yeah, like you said, like, oh, you know, you're sitting at your desk wrong. Let me crack your back and yeah. on your way, honey. Um, where my shit is just beat up and, and messed up. The other thing too is I think uh, from talking to you a little bit in text and hearing from Omar, uh, you like to stay up to date on things. Yeah. I like to people, I like people that, you know, science-based or whatever you want to call it, sure. um, that you do read the research, but you practice, uh, you know, talk the talk, walk the walk, kind of read the reads. Yeah. Uh, so you kind of see all scopes read and then make the your reads. own uh, judgment. I like that. Read the reads. <laughs> so we're going to play uh, Recovery <whistles> Mythbusters. Oh, goodness. So I'm going to throw some things out and you can... Am I the guy with the mustache? <laughs> so I have things that are like recovery or like popular. Um, shout out to uh, somebody totally left field. This guy, Jason Phillips, a nutritionist uh, that I recently watched a video. And he kind of like did this with... Uh, nutrition. People okay. were just throwing stuff at him and he was just fucking karate chopping it and I like that. Uh, so I thought we'd do that here. All right. Small sentence if you want, you could just say no, that sucks, or you could go into it. Yeah, you can go I'm into like it. The, I, my tagline is long answers to short questions. I'm in. So then this might be a series. If you guys dig <laughs> yeah. it, thumbs up, subscribe. His info is in the uh, description. Let's go. Uh, first, we'll just start out uh, foam rolling. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe foam rollers, myofascial release. Okay. 
Uh, thoughts, yes, no, it works, it sucks. I feel like a lot of my answers are gonna be that depends. Out yeah. of the gate, that depends. I think the biggest thing it depends on is the mechanism of correction. Okay. If you think you're breaking up tissue, I, that has gone the way of the dodo bird. Like that's antiquated. Why is that? So, uh, no, I 100% I agree and yep. know that's true. But why is it that people won't accept that? Like, I, no, 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 you gotta rub out the, the fascia. I'm like, if you rub out the fascia, like you bump your knee and then your shin would be. Or if you put a bar on your back. Yeah, 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 right? I'd have an indent. And like, yeah. yeah, you get a callus, but it's sure. not like my, an indent. No, I, so there's like a really good quote like from Neil deGrasse Tyson about the universe. Yeah. It's like, the universe is of no obligation to make sense to you. True. So, and I think your human body is the exact same way. Yeah. It doesn't have to make sense to you. And I think that's kind of where the, the misnomer came from is that physical therapists, whether they believed it or not, or chiropractors, whatever, um, they just needed a way to get buy-in. And the best way to get buy-in, I'm sure as you know, with clients, yeah, like yeah, that, yeah, is just yeah, get yeah. them it's more to, of a cue, you think. Get, get them to understand it or believe in it so that they'll do it. So, I mean, I think there is maybe more of a neurological, and I don't think myofascial is a good word, um, even though myo has is more muscle fascia, so it's like yeah. it's a little more structure based in the way it's worded. I like maybe like neuromuscular, something like that. I like that. Applying more of like correction to the nervous system, but again, it's like you don't pay a plumber to bang on the pipes you pay him to know which pipes to bang on so it's like how you use the phone these roller. are canadian terms i could tell that no one it's in big. california yeah, it's, it's big because <laughs> our pipes freeze I guess yeah we don't, up, i don't even know what the fuck that meant uh, but yeah so for me it's like foam roller it's it's i mean it's it's how you apply it yeah uh and again that comes down to frequency intensity duration um location so it's it is useful. Is it as useful as the bash and mash type will make you think? No. It's a misinterpreted. Misinterpreted. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, something to go along with that is you're right. Is like maybe physical therapists or edu the educated. Yes. Uh, they just read use the reads. it. Yeah, they, the reader readers <laughs> translate or, or use it as a cue to get people to do it. Sure. But then personal trainers take it like, oh yeah, no, no, no. I've I've read this one physical therapist forever. He said we're rubbing out some fascia. Yeah. Come here, little Timmy. We got to rub out fascia. And then. It, I mean, <laughs> Whoa, Timmy's Tim, 18. Run, Timmy. <laughs> Timmy's 18. Sign yeah. this waiver, will you? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so then uh, the telephone game happens, sure. and then the personal trainer is the idiot that's passing on, yeah. which happened in the bodybuilding world and the nutrition world happens everywhere. It's the few that make the most noise, yeah. is always the case. Bastards. So, so mm. uh, I guess then what you're saying, I'm going to put this in the dumb terms, I have a knot. Yes. And so instead of rubbing a foam roller on it and, and kneading it like dough, yes. what I'm doing is putting pressure on it and letting my brain know like, hey, this isn't exploding, chill out maybe. Yeah, I mean, muscle relaxation kind of works like a lock with a lot of different keys. Like okay. you, could, you could do like biochemical, like I give you a Valium, you won't feel shit. Right? Hey. You are a doctor. <laughs> Not one of those. Oh, you yeah, can't write no. on volume? Dude, do you think we'd be standing right no, now? No, we'd just be chilling. Party. Um, Dang it. So, I mean, biochemical uh, heat, heat to do it, right? Yeah. Or like, so maybe some like a vascular component or something like that. Um, acupuncture yeah. is shown. Electric have, or some shit. Yeah, exactly. So, I think there's understanding what key that you're going to use to turn the lock. Um, so, there's different, and there's different just within the realm of of like stretch reflexes, right? Like deep pressure stimulus will elicit a response, heat will elicit a response, but you know, uh, end range of motion, like you know, that's what static stretching yeah, is, yeah. right? Like Golgi tendon organs, muscle spindles, things like that. So um, it has its purpose along with like lacrosse balls and other, or much you want to yeah. spend your money <clears throat> more, on. More like, application uh, yeah. issues than, yeah. than the User actual media. Error. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, another one, which um, you sent me a picture of, uh, uh, saying kind of that you didn't mm. like it that I randomly put on Instagram just messing around. I saw that. Yeah, uh, inversion tables yes. or or um, distraction. Yeah, I guess technically you're trying to distract the spine or decompress yeah. the spine or by like hanging, hanging upside, hanging in upside a down. Self-made sex swing in yeah. the gym by a large band. Yeah, there's the boots over there. Actually, we we're gonna shoot I an intro. That. Should we yeah. shoot the intro? We'll shoot the intro. We're gonna shoot the intro of me. I'm gonna be hanging upside down or and something. I'm gonna look something. Am I gonna look disappointed? Yeah, okay. yeah, that could be a good uh, lumbar distraction. Too. Yeah. Okay. So hanging upside down, sure. because of gravity, my spine has crushed itself. So now I'm gonna hang upside down so my spine doesn't crush itself anymore. Again, the body is of no obligation to make sense to you. So I think just like the breaking up tissue, it gives like it gives people mental clarity. Like, oh, I get it now. Yeah. The, wait, we compress our spine with weight on our back when we squat, we'll decompress it <laughs> and things will be good, sure. right? Yeah, it's, I, I mean, people like, a dualistic we kind of live in a dualistic universe right up has down left yep. has right black has white yep. up has cold um but with the compression of the lower back is not meant to move 
right? It's built in a way where hips are mobile, low back stays stable, right? Core stabilization. Yeah. Um, so of that stability of the lower back, of the lumbar spine, we need to look at structure and function, right? Where muscles play a role in the functional stability yeah. of the lower back. And You're then, not kicking a soccer ball with your fucking No, that pelvis. would be incredible if you could do that. Yeah. But so muscles play a role in function and then you have uh, annulus fibrosis. So your, your lumbar discs ba basically break up into two subsections of your annulus fibrosis and your nucleus propulsus. That's like the fluidy stuff that ends up. Or cushions. Yeah. Cushions, yeah. yeah. Uh, then you have ligaments. There's massive network of ligaments between the bones that, that connect like the pelvis into the, into the lower back. Um, joint capsules, like little facet joints that keep vertebra aligned with adjacent vertebra in the lower back. Now, there is gonna be that stretch reflex on the muscles that feel tight. That's what you're feeling. These muscles are of an interesting nature because they're not neurologically wired like the rest of our muscles are. They're reactive to their position, but we can't contract them. Like when guys get low back pumps, yeah, yeah. they couldn't really do an exercise. But you can't flex the, it like your bicep. Exactly, yeah, it's yeah. not under conscious control. Yeah. It's all relative position, kind of an internal safety mechanism so one bone doesn't move too far to the other. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. in the midst of these bones is a spinal cord that's kind of important. Is this psoas and QL and all weird things like that? What? These muscles you're talking no, about? No, these oh. are like transversospinalis. Multifidus is the common one you'll hear. Rotatories, uh, intertransversarii. Throw more of these out because then in three months, I'm gonna get more messages that they're Montellar or Serii. Yeah, uh, no, so they're just like, uh, they're muscles that basically control relative position of the vertebra in all three planes of movement. Okay. Okay. So if they're tight, they're tight because some they're reacting and having to move or resist movement in an eccentric load. So. Yeah, the people are right. If it feels, and that's kind of the hardwired thought process. Yeah. If something feels tight, I'm going to stretch it, right? So if it feels- yeah, Or pound on it. I put more pound yeah. on it, right? So the, the band of distraction, what it does, it, yeah, it, in the shortest term, it'll have an effect on <clears throat> the neurological perception of that muscle of feeling tight. But when you're hanging from the squat rack for 20 minutes, after that initial transient release of the muscle, now we're getting into actual plastic deformity, which is like, your muscle has an elastic property to it. You can kind of shut it, shut it down and it'll come back to more or less the same length over time, whatever. But the discs and the joint capsules and the ligaments, these are things that we can't regain their elasticity, regain the tension. So you end up kind of in this vicious cycle where your low back is tight for any number of reasons. You have poor hip mobility, you yeah, have yeah. anterior pelvic tilt. Your shit posture, your shit fat. Po you're yeah. fat. Yeah. And that's yeah. the ones I see. It's yeah. always the fat guys yeah. who are hanging upside down. So instead of fix all I hung that, upside down last weekend. That's um, stuff. So what happens is they they release the muscle, but in doing so, they actually they degrade some of that structural stability that's also a contributing factor. Now we got to think stability is a value of a hundred percent. Yeah. And regardless, shoulder, hip, knee, whatever, and it's at what position we're getting contributions from function and what co positions we're getting contribution from structure, right? Between those two, they need to equal a hundred percent. Otherwise, you're going to end up with damage, pathology, yeah. breaks, disc herniations, whatever. So if we're diminishing the function's ability to contribute to that stability, or sorry, the structure stability, or structure's ability to contribute to that stability, then the muscles need to work that much harder. So if we're you know, adding length over time to these ligaments and um, tendons and discs and uh, joint capsules, then the muscle is going to reflexively have to take on more of the load over time. So and that's kind where of weird imbalances and knots weird imbalances and who knows or just you have to you feel like to just be normal. You have to hang yourself upside down every day. Yeah, so yeah. Rather, that's what I feel like uh, with general foam rolling. Going back to foam rolling, sure. is all these guys like, oh, I didn't foam roll. My legs are so tight. So I was like, well, that's because you foam roll for three hours every single yeah. day. Your body's used to that stimulus, yeah. and so you don't feel normal without it. But if you just do it when you need it, mm. maybe you don't fucking. I think just in conjunction, the idea is to always scale, scale stimulus from external to internal. If we can move our, get, change the perception using external stimulus so we can use our body's own internal stimulus yeah. to create that motion, create that motion, create that stability, create that mobility within ourselves. You're talking cues, motor pattern, cues, moving correctly. Motor pattern, yeah. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah, moving into more unstable positions. So yeah. by and large, the people that use the inversion tables or low back lumbar distraction yeah. stuff, nah. Your time better spent, I think, elsewhere. Yeah. So long answer to a short question. No, I liked it. Um, we'll just go still a little general here. Uh, I guess along the lines, a little bit of those two, like body tempering. Uh, it's become popular to lay really heavy things on you, um, kind of like just a weighted foam roller. Uh, I like the idea of it because I think I've thrown it on my quad and you're like, oh, that feels good. Like, yeah. like massage. Yeah. Like, 
Sure. Yeah, what do so I know? It's actually going. Crocs, but you look like an idiot. Yeah. So yeah. how do you? How do you? Uh, what? When? Why? How? Uh, and are they going for the same mechanism, kind of, as the foam roll, like you're talking about? Yeah. I mean, to me, it doesn't make sense because, again, it's a, a larger population. Like you've been in powerlifting warm-up rooms before. Yeah. But uh, without fail, the super heavies get off the squat, and they have their super heavier friend put one of these large tempering devices on their lower back. Yeah. So your lower back is an extended curve, it's lordosis, right? Lumbar lordosis. Yeah. So it's basically an extended curve. Thoracic spine is a kyphosis. Yeah. Um, a S, flex S curve. type shape going. Exactly. So when you're face down, you're applying that pressure low. You're actually increasing the extension of the curve. So thinking of why those muscles are getting tight in the first place. Yeah, yeah. They're usually drawn into too much lordosis. Tight hips, again, yeah. like we mentioned before, have play a big role. The psoas attaches in to right. the, the anterior body. You're tugging so, on it. Exactly, pulling that forward. So why would I want to put something on my lower back that's increasing that extension moment of the lumbar spine? Yeah, yeah. Right? Maybe better allocated to the front of the hip, stretching out the hip flexors, but I mean, there is benefit to that deep pressure stimulus. That's why massage therapists and chiropractors yeah. and active release stuff all exist. Um, but again, it's, you know, you can have the tool, but if you're not applying it in the right place. Um, so I just think the idea of, oh, if it hurts here, put it there. It's like, there's a difference between a symptom and a cause. It's a different tool. You can't put a wrench on a screw. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah, maybe, no, so maybe put that thing on your quad. Yeah. Maybe put it on a hip flexor. Maybe, hammy. maybe just put it on the shelf. And yeah. Move. Yeah. Um, it's, for me, that's a, that's a tough one just because with a with a foam roller we can actually create motion on it like we can do dynamic foam rolling where under that point pressure of the roller we can we can flex and extend the quad create that internal stimulus that we're trying to scale to right that's yeah. going to be what makes a lasting change over time to the function and the structure of the muscle so not a big fan and again a lot of times i see it it's the the heavyweight lifters and it's like if you put your own body weight on a pvc pipe that didn't have any resistance and you're not going to taco like a yeah. you know your mom's foam roller or whatever i think they would have just the same if yeah. not more of an actual deep pressure stimulus and give you the uh the ability to start moving around on and create that internal stimulus that's actually going to make a correction yeah and i guess uh even just logically you know that's the only way i can think because i'm no fucking schooled guy mm. uh but you start to think like all right well like that guy squats six seven eight nine a thousand pounds yeah uh, and that stimulus is going on as erectors or whatever is tight anyways. Yeah. Why would less weight than that fix that? Sure. Right. Well, I mean, that's just logic, right? Yeah. Like if I, I don't have a metaphor in my head, but it just doesn't make sense. If, if you're, if it's getting tight, like you said, and then you're getting it tighter in the wrong position, yeah. overextending. Yeah. Uh, and it's less stimulus than you put on your back two or three times a week. Yeah. Where are we headed? Exactly. Where can people find you? Website, Instagram? Yeah, uh, best place to find me nowadays, yeah. www.prescript.com, P-R-E-S-C-R-I-P-T. Yeah. Uh, Instagram, the underscore muscle underscore doc. Um, in person, not really. In person, Boss Barbell Club, uh, practice in Mountain View, California. There you go, um, near San Jose, near San Francisco, if you guys are ever visiting, check it out. Drop in. And uh, he's gonna go work on me, and then we're gonna eat food, and then we're mm. gonna podcast. Where, where can they find the podcast? Oh yeah, shit. I'm too many places. iTunes? Uh, iTunes, RX go. Radio. RX apostrophe D radio. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, oh, and, and YouTube. On. And the YouTube. YouTube. Muscle and, Doc? And YouTube, yeah, that's it. Muscle Doc. I, yeah, I'm, I'm not, like, I'm just shy of giving out my home address. <laughs> yes, well, I might as well. <laughs> 11, no, I'm not. My wife would kill me. Uh, yeah, that's it. All right, cool. Here we go.